Thank you, Madam Speaker. Question to the author. Without objection. What constitutes an assault weapon? There's various definitions of it. Um, that's also something that I think we need to look at because some of the uh, um, requirements, I believe, are, are superficial in nature. Um, but it's laid out in the statute. There's various requirements. You have to meet a number of the different elements. I think it's three to, to meet the definition. Um, it could be um, the, the type of grip on, 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 the, on the rifle stock. It could be whether there's um, a silencer or a scope. There's a whole bunch of different elements that could play into what constitutes an assault weapon. Okay, uh, back on my own time. I, I'm amazed that the author of this bill, or maybe I'm not amazed, is confused about a concept that even those who are charged with enforcing the law are. I talked to a sheriff who said it, he had pulled over a man. The man had what appeared to be an assault weapon in the back seat of the car. And so he wanted to make sure that he fully handled the situation properly. So he looked up the definition of an assault weapon here in California, and he couldn't find it. So he went to the local district attorney who also could not give him a definition of assault weapon. He took it all the way up to our attorney general, to her office, and they could not give a definition of an assault weapon. By the way, silencers are completely illegal, so that has nothing to do with an assault weapon. The, the bottom line is we're trying to ban something that we don't even understand. The real definition of an assault weapon is that it's scary looking and that we really just want to get rid of it. We love it when we use it in movies. We don't want to ban them there. We, we're, we're not here to ban the incredible assault of violence that is coming out of Hollywood, even though most of the hypocrites there are absolutely opposed to your constitutional civil right to defend your life, your liberty, and your freedom. You know, the Second Amendment was was brought by the founders to defend freedom from tyranny. And this right here is a particularly pernicious form of tyranny. Let me give you an example. Each and every one of you on this floor remembers the day that that cop killer came to my district. I was standing in my office. I was watching it on television because my kids were home and my wife was at work. And you know what? I told my son, you go into, if anybody knocks on that door, you go into the bathroom, you get in the bathtub, you take whatever weapon we have, and you take as many rounds as you need, and you load it with the biggest magazine, and you don't start sh stop shooting. If somebody tries to break down that door, you don't stop shooting until you're out of bullets. I don't want to trust that my son or my wife is going to have to stop and then, like a professional, be able to, to reattach a magazine. That can be very stressful in a situation at a time like that. And I don't want the government to come into my home and deny my family the right to defend their lives from somebody who came there to kill them, from a trained killer. And that literally is why we should not support this resolution here today. Who are we? to tell an individual that their gun is the wrong type of gun to defend their lives, whether it be from a killer, whether it be from a rapist, whether it be from somebody who wants to break into your home in the middle of the night and kidnap your child. I don't think Sacramento or Washington, D.C. is the right place to make that decision. And I believe the founders were very clear. They wanted no free man to be disbarred from the right to own a firearm. So we ought to tread very, very, very carefully. We have pushed way too many laws. And we have... 30 we have, seconds, Mr. Donnelly. We have created an antagonism out among the people toward their government because we are trying to deprive them of a key constitutional civil right of self-defense, I urge a no vote.